let's get started. So I just uh, put the uh, lab one on campus. We haven't covered yet, so don't be nervous. Uh, we go through those today, how you can submit the assignment and how you can uh, create your uh, website. So the assignment uh, will be submitted on campus. So if you go to uh, assignments or discussions, and if you click lab one, you should be able to see the instruction. Uh, you can also see all the lab assignments directly on Google site. So if you go to uh, the lab section, uh, it's also be here. So all the lab assignment I will post in here, but I also put on uh, campus. So for lab one, uh, it's pretty simple and straightforward. Just to submit two links. So all we need to do is just uh, reply here, and then you can just uh, your Git, uh, GitHub profile and your personal website, something like this. So I'm gonna copy in here, and then just replace this one with your uh, <coughs> GitHub profile and things. Uh, we'll talk about the differences between these two uh, today, and so all we need is to submit. And so this is would be uh, on GitHub discussions. Uh, you're welcome to look at uh, what your classmate have come up with so they can learn from each other all the lab assignments that we submitted through this semester you'll be all on uh, the discussion board uh, welcome to explore see how other uh, students are doing okay but you will need to submit first before you can see other stuff you're welcome to comment or, or like uh, whatever you want but it's more like open discussion uh, so if you see any good example feel free to look into the source code and attack this course is not about like memorizing stuff. It's more about like, building your skills and how to build something that will be useful for you uh, personally. Although, I mean, this is not really software design, but it's still in the end of the day, once you have something, you need to promote. So it'd be nice to have a website that you can put your stuff on there and then can show to the people. So this will be just the first step, showing you how to build out the foundation uh, that you can promote. And if you want, you can click the link. Uh, here, uh, there's not much in there, so we're going to create uh, today. Create something like this. There's a home page that you can showcase something you know, your project, and you're also going to have a website. Uh, so you'll be your username dot github dot io. Uh, right now, they looks the same, uh, but I will create from scratch how to uh, get that done uh, today. Are we clear about lab one? So it's still, um, I believe, next uh, Wednesday, by the end of next week. And so you have more than eight, eight, nine days to do it. And if you need more time, let me know. But after today, you should already have that pretty much done. But you, be, because you are building a website, so you need to customize some content to add some stuff. But uh, all the practical steps should be pretty complete. But you just need to refine the content. And that's... Uh, you can take whatever long time you need to build but hopefully uh, this will be the uh, starting point that you can start building a website so how many of you have already had a personal website somewhere one two okay four five good right uh, more than one sort you already have but right now just showing another option right uh, if you're not using github you might be using other websites wordpress or others but there are lots of free stuff out there that can help you create some website. Uh, if you want, you can check out uh, my, let me see here, my website, wetlands. Wetlands.io. Uh, this one actually is hosted on GitHub, it's free. Uh, if, you, if you want, you can create a website like this pretty quickly. Uh, but you need to have content to actually do that. But I'm talking about how you put state one on the web uh, or, or host state on the internet. Uh, you can get this done pretty five minutes, and then it's up and running. Um, but the content takes more time to build up. But I'm just showing you that you can. You don't need to pay anything to have a personal website. Uh, but you want if you want to have a custom domain, you need to pay some. I think ten bucks or something per year. But uh, it's up to you whether or not. But bottom line you're going to have a, a link like your github username dot github dot io so that's free for everyone as long as you have a github account questions if not let's continue with uh, the uh, the lecture so last time we already talked about how you can create a github repo right and then how you can uh, push the changes to github right have you all practiced so today we're going to create a special GitHub repo. 
that will be used for your personal website. So I'm going to go show you step by step how you can do that. Um, so GitHub has some spatial repo and spatial files that uh, will be used for the uh, for hosting website. So what we are going to use for is, is actually part of so-called GitHub pages. So if you want, you can just Google GitHub pages. I'm going to show you here. This is, for example, website for your project hosted in here. Uh, you're welcome to check out the instruction. It's pretty simple and straightforward. Uh, there's some short video here. Again, uh, we are going to do that step by step. So here, you're welcome to look at the instru uh, instructions. And it's very important. We're going to create a public repo. So you need, you see the instructions here. You need to name the repo something like username. Basically, your GitHub username. Don't use something else. It won't work. So if your username is something like this, you need to exactly like this. And then github.io. And this will be your home page, basically your website, basically where it's being hosted. The nice thing about this is that uh, you don't need to have a space. So you can put whatever stuff you want to have here. Traditionally, if you're trying to create a website, uh, you need to find a so-called host space. So where you want to host the file, usually you have to pay something or there be some free version, but there is some like copyright or logo stuff that you cannot remove. But for this one, it, it's pretty much unlimited. You just need to know what to do. So we're gonna create a repo like this. If you already have one, uh, right now go into your GitHub repo to change it. Um, so we're gonna start from scratch. And then uh, it's pretty straightforward. So go to open your uh, GitHub account. And then, uh, uh, one, one second. I'm going to show the steps that for those of you already have a website, uh, so you can temporarily uh, change it so that we can create a new website, a website from scratch. So for those of you who do not have yet, uh, you can skip this step. So I'm just going to find where's my repo. So it'd be something like this. Uh, since I already have one, you cannot have the same repo with the same name. So what I can do is to temporarily change this one to something else. Or say, for example, backup something. Make sure you do this uh, because I want you to build one from scratch. So you do that very quickly. So if you already have one, try to change the name. It won't break your stuff. You can always change it back. So um, once I have this, then I can go to uh, click the plus sign, upper right corner, create a new repo. Okay. So this one is very important. Again, uh, this will be your username. So the repo name must be your username dot github dot io. Okay. So for me, it will be gswqs.github.io okay make sure you have this one this will be customized whatever username dot github.io okay exactly the same and then uh, if you want you can put a description uh, if you want i can say uh, my personal website uh, you don't have to it's just a short description and then from here if you want you can add a readme uh, pretty simple one just add a readme file here and other than that if you want to choose a license uh, it's up to you I can just choose maybe uh, MIT license you, you don't have to but if because this will be public okay so if someone is copying a website you have to copyright right so it's good to add a license in here and then just click create repo <laughs> that's it and you should have a website, uh, have a repo like this. Finish. Okay. And then, uh, if you want, let's take a look at this one here. Let's see. Is there anything else here? Uh, settings. You see, it's building actually. Uh, after you click this, do you see this one here? Can you click the the uh the see it's like wrong icon here? Do you see that? And you see, page is built and deployment. So basically right now, GitHub is building a website for you. Once you see the green check mark, then your website will be up and running. If you want, you are welcome to click to see the details. And the reason for this is, if you create other repo, you won't see that one. This one is so-called the spatial repo. It's like every GitHub account has a repo. Then this one can be used your hosting space, basically your website. but uh, you can actually create as many websites as you want, but this will be the main page. So for example, later uh, I can go to the URL, uh, my username, .io. if you have other website, for example, slash, like 
if you have another website. So just like utk.edu, this would be the utk.edu. But within the UTK, right, we have so many departments. So we utk.edu slash geography slash like computer science, whatever. You can create many others, but they will be hosted. Uh, we're going to create other reports outside, but right now it's done. So if you want, you can let me see the GitHub actions. It's actually done and you should see the URL. So if you click here, do you see this one? See the, uh, so if you click actions and then on the maybe the view and deploy, if you click the summary, do you see the URL here? Yes? Click the URL, see if it opens. Yes? If not, let me know. Everyone? Exciting, right? You have a website. Right now, it's nothing. It's just a readme file. Because github.io, automatically, if you have a readme.md, it's going to use that one. But if you have other file, index.html or something, you will use that one will have a priority. So right now, you see this is a website is functioning already. You can make any changes, right? So now, you know, right? You have the GitHub repo, you can pull the repo to your local computer and you can start making some changes. So I'm gonna show you step by step how you can make, like this is pretty boring, but um, if you wanna create a simple website, this is it, right? You can add text, you can add content, you can add hyperlink, images, all kind of stuff, uh, anything you want. So next, what we're gonna do is to pull the repo to our local computer using Visual Studio Core. And then we can open this one um, to make changes. Okay, so next, go back to your GitHub repo and just make sure that you copy the URL. So go to the uh, green icon here and then click this one, the button, right? Once you're here, um, open your computer or anywhere you want to uh, save the repo. So let me see, for example, I want to save under my downloads directory, maybe maybe documents, okay? And then right click, uh, terminal. You can use Anaconda prompt, whatever uh, whatever you want, or using your Mac terminal, uh, but make sure that you CD into the directory where you want to save, okay? So for example, I, let me uh, just uh, start from the beginning. So I'm just going to type terminal. Uh, this would be the same on Mac, Linux, or uh, Windows. So once I'm here, um, this is my user directory, right? So I'm just going to just cd uh, lowercase into maybe the documents or downloads directory, whatever you want. cd and then uh, into the documents folder, right? So this is right now we're inside the directory where we want to clone this repository. So all we need is just git clone and then control V <laughs> and then hit enter. It should now automatically clone the repository to your computer. Yes? Any questions, issues? All right. And once we have there, now it's the same step what we did in the last lecture, right? We can make whatever changes we want and then we can uh, slowly building a nice website. Okay. So now go back to the uh, directory. So right click, uh, open using Visual Studio Code or you can just open an empty Visual Studio Code and then open the directory. Uh, either one is fine. Right. So this essentially is what you see on this web page. Right. It's using so-called Markdown. We haven't covered Markdown yet, but it's actually pretty simple. It's just a, a plain text language that you can uh, write something using plain text. But when you render, you will have some uh, so-called rich text. You can have images, you can have video, you can have like, uh, we will do that later. But for now, let's just simply make some changes. For example, uh, add some new lines, we, whatever you want to add. So for example, my name is blah, blah, right? Right. I'm a faculty or even what is state whatever you want to add. I'm faculty member in the department of geography and sustainability
Hey. That's it. I just add one sentence, right? Control H. That's it. And you can add hyperlinks uh, if you want. So let me show you some plugin, but maybe just add this one just to soak so I see if it works or not, right? So once you make the changes, what's the next step? Mm -hmm. Yeah, commit, right? Commit changes. So pretty simple, right? If you click the icon here, again, it's so one file has been changed. And then uh, in here, I can say add, add what? Uh, add some text, whatever you like. And then how do you commit? How do you commit? What's the shortcut? And remember, uh, you, of course you can click the commit, but you want to use the update type, control enter, it's commit. And then, if you see here, sync changes, uh, you see the up arrow key, so basically it allows you to push to GitHub. So, if you already authenticate, oh, if you already authenticate your uh, GitHub uh, account last time, uh, it should be automatic. So you can either just click the sync changes, Oh, this also should be up right here, and then click push. Either one is fine, so it's up to you. After this one, you're welcome to go back to the website, or you can go to branches, and then you can click the icon here, also to open this one directly on GitHub. And see that? And every time after you make some changes, it's going to review the website. It's just similar like what you did if you have a personal website. It's going to make some changes, but this is more like so-called continuous integration. The nice thing about this is not just like plain text. You can also have a lot of run some Python script or whatever to integrate it. So it will be a lot more interactive. But it will take some time, a couple minutes to build a website. And once it's there, you can refresh. It will show you the new uh, stuff. So here, uh, it's almost done. So we click. Uh, is it done? Okay, it's done. Now go back to here. Refresh the website. All right? You see the new changes? Yes? If you have, if you have questions, if you have an issue, let me know. I can slow down and then just make sure you get that. But uh, this will be the step. So you can continue to make changes. You can continue to add stuff. You can add some images, you can add some photos, whatever things you like, and then eventually you will have a simple website. But I will show you some other more complicated one. But for now, this is just a plain text, right? It's nothing complicated. Yes? Getting a 404. 404? <laughs> uh, go back to your repo. And go to your actions. Actions. Uh, when was this one? You need to commit. Uh, to click into. It seems you're missing. Do you have some other repos using the same name? Mm -hmm. No. Um, how about you? Are you the same error? Um, I mean, I, I got it at first, but once I changed the name to back up, the 404 error went away. Yeah, because it, once you change the. Um, it might be the issue because you have already have some, but it should not be because I, I just did the same thing. So, um, let me see what should be here. Yeah, ideally you should see the new DVD cover actually. I'm not sure why it's not. I see. Oh, you need to have 18? If you don't have the 18. Oh. So make sure that the username is exactly the same. If you don't, it's not going to work. Okay. What I'm saying is, your repo name you need to be a username. If your username contains some number, you need to use exactly the same. Otherwise, it won't work. Okay. So once you have this, then we can continue. Maybe add some hyperlinks, add some stuff. But next, I'm going to show you some plugins that will make it easier for you to add hyperlinks. So for example, I want to have my web page, but I also want to have maybe have the department geography and uh, sustain your UDK have some hyperlinks so people can click, right? So how can you do that? You'll be in here, 
go back to Visual Studio Code and then select this one. Uh, press Control L. See if it works. Uh, it doesn't work right now, so probably I don't have the the plugin enabled. Let me see here. Like this one. Control L. Uh, it doesn't work. So probably we need to install some plugins. So there are tons of plugins that makes your life easier. And I think the one is called uh, Markdown Shortcut. Uh, I believe I don't have it here. So just type uh, Markdown uh, Shortcuts. All oh, Markdown, all oh, I believe. Uh, yeah, but just shortcuts, maybe this one. But all in one should be, might be the same. Let me see if it has the shortcuts. Anyway, let's try this one. Markdown shortcuts. Okay. And then just install. Uh, then it should be uh, activated. So Markdown shortcut basically, uh, when you're writing text, right, you want to add hyperlinks, you want to add images. This one has some shortcuts that makes it uh, a whole lot easier. Have you installed it? Okay. Once we install it, then we can come back to this one. So from here, oh, maybe go to, uh, let's do UTK first. Okay. How about this one? UTK Knoxville and then Control L. When you press Control L, this is Control D. Do you see this one here? So now this is for you to add hyperlinks. So if you already have the hyperlink, you can copy paste. If not, I just have HTTPS utk.edu. Hit enter and see what changes. So basically this is markdown. Uh, you're going to add hyperlinks, basically a square brackets and then the parentheses and this will be hyperlink. So when it's being rendered, uh, you won't see this one. You'll be just the link, uh, just the, the text with the hyperlink. So sometimes you might want to preview, like see what it looks like before it push to GitHub. So if you want, you can press Control K and MV. Uh, let me see here. Uh, Control S first. So let's save this one and then come back to here. Control K. Oops. This weird. It doesn't. Uh, maybe Control P. Uh, no, this. Oh. What, what did I do? Control K and V. Okay. Control K and then V. So it's a bit confusing. Press Control K and then press V. It will show you the preview on the right. So again, Control K view. You see the one on the right? So this gives you a preview of what it looks like. So this is the markdown and this is what is going to be showing up on the website. Can you see this panel? Okay, good, right? So now you can continue to add more stuff. This is how you can add some hyperlinks, right? If you, you can directly write it by using a shortcut, uh, would be much easier. So similarly, I can add like the department. So let me go here. Uh, it will be geography.utk.edu, right? Okay, so I can do the same thing. Control C. Come back to here, uh, whatever department that you are in, I can just select the name. And again, Control L, Control V, Enter, and then Control S. Uh, sometimes you might need to reopen the uh, the preview, so I'm going to Control K, V. Awesome, right? So now you have hyperlinks. Right, so next I can show you maybe add some, how we can add some images. Uh, if you want. So image is similar to the hyperlink, but you can render that one on the website. So um, find whatever images you like. Okay, I'm just going to Google to Google, or maybe just simply uh, this one, okay? So you can click any links on the website, uh, on the internet, and I'm just going to right click, copy image address. So this will be the direct link uh, to the image, right? So if I copy this one, paste on the URL, it's going to show the the, um, the page, right? So come back to here. I'm going to show you how you can add the image. So over here, it'll be like this. So exclamation, and then square brackets, and then parentheses. Okay, it looks like a little bit uh, weird, but what you need is to paste the URL into the parentheses. So the bracket basically is just like, um, 
what's that called? Like uh, the tax, like when for like uh, what's that called? Uh, access, uh, accessibility, like basically the tax behind when you are reading using those apps. But you be like this. So paste whatever images. The direct UI, okay, don't put the like uh, 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 hyperlink. Usually, direct UI means it's going to end up with something like dot jpeg, dot png, dot gf, whatever you like. So it will be something like this, and then control S, okay, and then control K, view. See that? Isn't it nice, right? So actually, it's all using plain text. You can actually render the images. You can render GF animation. You can render all kind of stuff. So this is just one simple example showing you how you can. You can also add video if you want. Um, there are a bunch of. It's just Google Markdown install video. Yes. Could you show one more time how you do the right? Oh, uh, preview. So you'll be here under here. Control K and then V. Control K and V. Uh, I'm not sure if the Mac computer or Windows should be pretty much same. Can you all get this one? Any issues? All right, so this is just adding one image. You can add more, okay? So let me go, uh, go online, and I can maybe find another one here. You can Google like whatever image is like. So let me find see if I have any animation here, books. Uh, what do I have? Uh, GIF. Cool GF. Okay, let me see what I can find. Okay, this looks cool. <laughs> How about this one? Right click, copy link address, control V, uh, control V. Uh, this one won't work. Okay, so, hey, uh, uh, here, embed. Uh, you need, you need, again, you need to find a direct URL. Don't like copy this website, it doesn't work. So, embed. Uh, see here. Yeah, this one. In uh, if you want, you can actually you it, it Markdown can run the HTML. So if you want, you can just simply copy call, and then come back to here. It should work as well. So if I paste this one here, I believe it should work. Okay, Control K view. You see? So Markdown, you can paste whatever is if you already know HTML, that's fine. Uh, so this one allows you to embed, but it's better to have some direct URL. So HTTP blah 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 dot gif. That one you don't have this like complicated HTML. You can do simple things like this. So uh, let me. I believe there should be some direct GF animation. Uh, IMGUR dot com. I believe this one has a lot of uh, direct links that you can get to. So see if we can. Uh, how about this one? And no, this one. Uh, one second, let me find some cool animation. I believe I have some on the website. I right? forgot, yeah. Uh, book. Um, anyway, I don't have anything here, but <coughs> if I Jeff. I think we can get some direct one. I how about this one? It's all on the Okay, this one works. Okay, as I show you, 
Uh, this is actually better. Something blah 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 dot yeah, and then I can insert this one into directly into the website. Again, you can use HTML if you want, but usually I personally don't want to mix uh, the file with HTML. So this one is fine. I can add another one here, the style here, and then again exclamation square brackets parentheses. Oh, uh, the parentheses need to outside the square brackets, and then control view, uh, control V again. Uh, control S, control K, view. Hello, right? Isn't it cool? Now just push to gig, uh, push to gig up. You will be done. Yeah. Could you do a photo from like a file path? Like if you have. Yes. Like so you can you can have a file here. So usually the recommended way would be to have an image directory somewhere because if you have too many, it's not good. So I can download some images. I can put in here and then you just uh, reference the uh. uh relative URL so I can show you so let me create a new directory you'll be a new folder I can say maybe images video whatever you like so once I have this one uh, just download whatever images you like so I can do the same thing I can copy this one uh, save image so whatever image you like you can save it directly into the directory so I'm going to save into uh, my folder here images right and I can say yeah Q yeah okay now how do you actually reference the the file uh on that i can do it here exclamation square brackets uh parentheses and then here will be just images uh of course you need to uh, you, you don't need to remember that it's actually auto complete so control enter right and uh, not control enter just uh tap and then control s again Control K view. You should see two. Eh? Is it coming? Uh, images. Let me come out this one. Interesting. <laughs> so if you press Control, uh, Control slash, it's going to come out that line. So it won't show up. Uh, so you see the, uh, kind of the, the yellow. Square brackets, I uh, don't get a uh, green, so it's going to come on out. So let me try this one again. Control V, huh? Interesting. I think it should work. I'm not sure why. Sometimes it will have to be already on the website, so let's figure, uh, try it out and push it to GitHub, see what happens. Control S, and then again. Um, Commit it. So I'm going to say add images. Okay. Control enter. Sync changes. Okay. And let's see if it works or not. So one nice thing about this is um, you can actually host a bunch of files on this website and you can join the link, send to other people. Uh, so all the files will become public. So you can have your project images. You can videos, but try not to post like a very large file. But for images, it's usually okay. But don't do like gigabyte of data. It's not good for that. But uh, save of megabyte is not an issue. Once you have that, if you come back to the uh, GitHub repo, uh, where is it? Here, refresh. So on GitHub, it's automatically render those. You see, actually, both of them actually works. So sometimes it might not work on a local computer. Because when it's retrieving the file, it's being treated as its own website. So your local file actually is not really a website. But if there's a direct HTTP URL, it will work out of the box. For local file, it might not show up on the preview. But when it's deployed, you will be able to retrieve the file. So now you have this. And oh. Oh, this one is actually not right. This one HTML. It doesn't work very well on the GitHub rendering. but. I believe after it's deployed, it should be it should work. So again, just try, try uh, wait for this one to finish, and then see how it goes. But you get the idea. You can have images, you can have videos, something like that, uh, to show on the website. Also, it'll be better to use the direct URL rather than have the file direct on the repo because your repo size can grow uh, if you have a bunch of images. But if you only have the direct HTTP URL to images video, your repo can still be very tiny. 
but you can have a lot of content directly from elsewhere. So in that way, um, your, your, your repo size can be pretty small. Yes? Yeah, then you then you 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 will, you will not show up. So you just need to make sure that you have the links from uh, stable sources. Um, that's the downside. That if they delete the, the the images, then your website will need to find the new links. Uh, it will not be available. So it's okay to have those. For example, for those images, I can have a backup somewhere on my local computer, but it doesn't push to GitHub. So in that way, I have a local copy, and but it doesn't increase your repo size. I, I can show you how to do that. So in that way, you know, like even if the website is broke, uh, the links are broken, I can redirect the link to my local to the file on my local computer, and then you can post the link. Uh, I will show you later. But for now, let's see if it works here. Uh, refresh. Okay, it's done. Then we can look at this one. Refresh. Hello, right? Nice. This one. So when it's rendered as a website, uh, it's not. Uh, it's better than the uh, GitHub um, direct rendering. So this one right now is basically built the website. So you you were able to render all the HTML source code. When you open the link directly on GitHub, this one, it doesn't really render uh, HTML. So this why you see this one here doesn't look good. So that's why I said. Don't try to mix like Markdown and HTML, although it can do, but it's not recommended. You can also embed um, uh, video and other stuff, but this should give you uh, some like starting point, like how you want to do that. So as I said uh, earlier, if you really want to like make sure your website works, and right now this URL, for example, is on the website, if it breaks, um, then it will not be available. So one thing you can do is to maybe uh, I can save this file to my computer. So for example, right, this is the file. Uh, you want to have a backup, save this one, save image as. And I can say, for example, I can have another directory here because the image directory already created. Uh, anything you put inside the image directory is going to push to GitHub. But we can have a folder on our computer, but it's not pushed to GitHub. So for example, here I can create a new directory, say uh, private Okay, you can use whatever name you like, but I can say just private, and then I can save this image in here, right? If you open your repository, it's going to be the image in here. Within the uh, Visual Studio Code, right? It's going to show you that the image is unchecked. So if you try to control enter, it's going to push this one to GitHub. So this is what we don't want to, because if you have some files or some sensitive information, you don't want to synchronize to GitHub, then you need to ignore this file on your local computer so that it doesn't get pushed. So what you can do here, click this one here, and then right click, we need to create a new file. Uh, so new file, and the file name need to be dot git ignore. Okay, make sure you use the name exactly like this. You will see the icon actually automatically show up. So dot git ignore and then hit enter okay. so this file is because it's a github repo github will know that what file you want to ignore uh, so in that way it, not everything is pushed to github so and then you can exclude directory or you can exclude a specific file uh, once you can do if you just want a specific file i can come to here and then this one here you can right click Right click the image, for example, as I added earlier, and it's going to show you add to dot git ignore. So that means if I only I want to exclude this file, I can act, act, it's not going to show up here. So pay attention to this one right now, it's you. But once I say add to git ignore, it's gone. So that means this file is no longer being checked. It won't be pushed to GitHub. And automatically, you see this one? All right? It's already ignore anything in the file in here it's automatic but if you want to uh, basically exclude all the files under the private directory you can do the same thing so actually you can just come here 
just remove this one and then just the directory name slash that means all the files within this directory is not going to be checked okay and then just control s done then i can add more uh, files for example similarly okay there is a file for example here this uh, gf animation i also want to have a copy so i can come back to here uh, where is it which one okay here right click save image and then again save in here done so now if you open this one i just saw no so all the files under the private directory will be ignored and just to come back to the question that i addressed earlier right assume these things are all broken it's no longer available so now what should we do what do you think what should we be doing in order to replace the file I have to make it work so it's actually very simple all I need to do come back to here copy this file and then paste it maybe into the image directory and then just come back to the github repo replace this one with image and then the file name uh, the image directory and then the file name and then the website will be up like right, in case it will be great the hyperlinks like not not too difficult so you can have the file from local computer you can have file from the internet uh, but downside of using the http right here is that the file might be gone someday you never know but it's up to you what you want to do okay so this is how you i uh, create a simple website and using the um markdown right simple easy hyperlink you can have sections so right now this one you can see here the uh the one pound sign one hashtag so this is basically heading one you can have multiple sections uh, so for me i can for example here um i would say have two power signs i say introduction or maybe maybe education background okay and then i can have some like here uh project whatever how many sections you like and in this way you can have different sections showing up right your background your project uh, some cool stuff that you want to show up so you can have as many things as you want in terms of this um the markdown i have i believe i have the let me go back to the website here resources uh there's a like markdown cheat sheet so if i open this one you can come back to here this is basically what kind of things you need to write in your markdown and this is what you're going to look like after you render the website so you can have different heading like h1 h2 h3 h4 uh, this will be useful so you can actually copy anything you like right you can have uh, embassies you can have lists um, right again this is what you write in the markdown this is what it, after it's being rendered right links images uh, you can have uh, that's what i uh, show you earlier all text and then the html the link um you can also have source code you can have all kind of stuff right you can even have youtube video in here so let me show you another one how you add some source code you want right if you want to add some python right i can uh what's this one do, 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 uh the, the the keyboard on the the tilde sign the the the, the other one under the tilde sign so and then i can say python hit enter and then did it okay so here this is where you can write python code so markdown can embed the python code in there pretty nice so i can say uh print hello control s control k view See that? it's going to render the call and we can also do that in Jupyter notebook uh, we cover more later this, this method but markdown is very powerful very easy to use and it's using plain text and you can embed call so this is kind of similar to the Microsoft Word document right you write something and then you select you do the formatting different font size images insert something same idea but this is just plain text so you don't need any software 
you can open using any notepad or any text editor. It will you will just win the uh like this. And then I can just say maybe add uh sections. Okay, control enter, push. Okay. And just wait for a couple of seconds, then you should be able to uh, see the updated stuff on here. So this allows you to add me this video, other stuff. You're welcome to explore. So this will be the simplest one. And the next I'm gonna show you how you can have more like nicer website, where right? you can use some templates, download some template, and then just copy and paste the template, make some simple changes, and then we have a nice website. So there are tons of templates out there. You're welcome to find the one uh, that best suited your um, your purpose. So this once wait for this one to finish. But you can also see that from here, right? If I push to GitHub and earlier add a Python code block in here, you will see on the right here it has like a copy sign. So this actually can showcase. It's very useful for your GitHub repo, especially if you are doing some coding project. You want to provide some sample code for other people to use. Right, so this is like a shortcut. Once you put in here, people just click. They don't have to select. Right, it's more like. But for this text in here, you do have to select. So it's like for different uh, purposes. And another good thing about this, it, it can do the uh, text highlighting, different color. So it's not just like plain text. So if you have more stuff, you see here. Like this is like, what's this color? Kind of like light blue color. You can have text. Uh, we do a lot more uh, throughout the semester, but for now, just showing you uh, Markdown is something that we is use a lot in all the GitHub repository, especially for documentation, for showcasing stuff. Is it finished? Okay, all done. Refresh. All right. Location background, you can have project, you can all kind of different sections, up to you what you want to, uh, what you want to do. Okay, so this is for the Simple markdown. Next, let's do a fancy one. Okay, create a fancy website, right? Within three minutes. So all we need to do is just to download a template. So if you go to the website here, I show you. Uh, there's a link in here. Go html5.net and come back to here. Scroll down. Find any template you like. So these are all free. Again, you're welcome to Google to find some other one. But this is the one I find pretty useful because all the stuff is just basically one uh, one file. We just need to modify one individual file. So if you want, you can go here, scroll, and maybe see the live demo just to see what the website looks like, right? So if you see, I can move down, right? Pretty nice, right? You can tablet, and this is like uh, responsive. So it will work on mobile phone, on the tablet, on desktop, whatever you like. So take some time, find the one you like. It doesn't matter, right? You can you can change it later. But it's let me see, find the one for example. I'm gonna use depends on the purpose. If you if you have a lot of video images, you might want to find the one and uh, if you have some uh, if you want to create one for your resume, you might want to find something like more customized. Um, let's see here. For example, how about this one? Right, I kind of like this one because it's, you have different sections, and then you can show your name. You can have some other stuff, right, uh, for your website. So, for me, uh, I'd like to try this one. So, what you need to do is just right click after you find the one, and then just right click. I uh, know right click upper right corner. It's going to download this one to your computer. Okay. So I'm going to download maybe to my downloads directory. And that's it. So once you have this, you can unzip the file. You see? This is just basically a website. Uh, all the files. So everything is within HTML. It's better to unzip the file so I can double click and then maybe, or maybe right click, extract the file to a directory, okay? Now I have this one, okay, and you can open. Nice, right? But this website right now is hosted on a local computer, so all the files for the website is already here. And very simple, copy this file to your GitHub repo, make changes, commit, push, you'll be yours, okay? 
this as simple as that so next let's come back to here select all the files and then uh, copy go to your github.io repository you don't need to delete anything from here uh, your the existing one will still be there it won't inter interfere with what we have for the new one so again we're going to copy all the files in here if you notice right now we have an index.html earlier because we don't have the index.html so github we use the readme.md to render the website but now we have this one this one has a higher priority so this one will be rendered first uh, but you still you'll be able to access to this one if you want but let's take a look at this uh, again you can double click just to make sure that it works as expected so next step will be to commit the changes but if you want you can actually make some simple uh, changes first so this will be the index you see there are a bunch of files 45 uh, you can just ignore it and then come back to here index.html so this is where that needs some time to learn HTML but you don't have to you can make some very simple uh, modifications so you just need to make sure that where do you modify so for example I know right right now the template have this name I'm going to change to my name okay just control C come back to here and then control F just to find where it is located okay exactly here all right and then so all I need to do make changes change to my name okay and then your title control S that's it you're welcome to make more changes but I'm just showcasing like exactly how I'm doing right nice see my name here okay. you can add more sections uh, if you want it's all the things that you need to change it is actually within this file so it's not that complicated you just need to follow the same one just copy paste make some customization and that's it so now once I have this come here I can just commit the changes add template and then control enter push and then within two minutes you have a fancy website that you can it's a template it's just like a a template but again it takes some time for you to have the content but now you know like how we can actually create a website so come back to here refresh see that all the files have been here and it's building once it's done then we can see how it looks right you will have the URL and that's essentially what you need for lab one right you have the one URL we don't have time uh, we might not have time to do the we might be maybe the, the sec the second link but let's see what this one looks like okay so do it and then show me the link see if it works can you yes can you help me yes uh, i'm successfully like committing the changes to github but whenever i try to like open it it just doesn't work uh, so like i'll copy this uh not not bk you need to have one the BK won't work anymore. You need a, you need to push changes to your new repo. You know what I'm saying? The, the repo need to be GitHub to IO. Okay. You create a one like this. Well, I just, I just like. You rename it, it, but you rename it. Yeah. You rename, it, but you don't use this one. You need to create a new one. Okay. And then you push the changes to the new one. Okay. 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 Hope it's done. It's done. Refresh. La la. Right. Isn't it nice? Now I have a website, I have a URL, and it's exactly work like that. But you're welcome to customize. Uh, not everything works right now, but at least if you select, and you can customize. For example, all the icons, right? Your your personal website, your social media you can you can add more stuff and you can just add more items whatever item you like you can have images you can have all kind of stuff on there so this is but this one is using HTML so then it's a bit more complicated than markdown but you're going to have more fancy so markdown is just for 
simple stuff for certain documents and other stuff. This is more like for nice personal website. And also there are a lot of templates available on GitHub. You're welcome to find uh, some templates. Um, okay. Anyone finish this one? Show me. No, no one? Yeah, if you already have one, show me, see what, what it looks like. Okay, cool. Stay like that. What do you mean? Uh -huh. Oh, you push the change in GitHub. Have you pushed the change? Uh, go to open your GitHub repository. Um, refresh. Okay, it's done. And then um, go back to the website, refresh the website. Refresh. Oh, yes. It's cool, right? How about you? Um, okay. Uh, if you have any issues, uh, work on that, I can help you out. Um, but I want you to practice in class, make sure you can get something functional. Yes? Uh, I think still working on that, so. Click this one here. Uh, maybe go to the file, uh, the upper left corner, uh -huh. and then open the index HTML. I think it's not. It's, uh, you need to save the file because there's a. I need to save all the files, and then click the uh, the git. Icon on the left side. Down, down, down. The gig icon. Yeah. Next, next one. This one. Uh, I think it's still working. You see the, the progress bar. Right. So maybe some internet problem or something. It's not committed yet. So you see here, it's not. Um, maybe you can try close the Visual Studio Code and open again. And. Yeah, it might be just your the your form and then I close this double click open again. And then click the uh, git icon, see if you can commit the changes again. Uh, I think it's just your Okay, and then just type a text message up there. And then control enter. Control enter. Okay. Um, in, because you only you only push one file, you need to push all of them. Write another message. Um, oh, it's updating. Okay, might be the issue. Yeah, you need to commit all the files. Make sure that it's all connected. It works now. Yeah. Okay. okay. How about you? Yeah, I, got, I mean, I haven't got the fancy one to work. But... Yeah, get the fancy one. <coughs> all right. If you can show me the fancy one, how about you? Is it working? Okay. Cool. How about you guys? Okay, it's up to you. But I just want to make sure that uh, if you have any technical issue, then you can okay. solve that. Uh, uh, is it working now? Oh, okay. Yes. okay. <laughs> I wouldn't have If you need me to show again, I can show you. Uh, but if you already have a GitHub repo, okay, cool. How about you? Okay, you just copy this in there and then you choose the uh, change. Okay. Uh, your repo is not, not right. Your username don't give up the right No. No give up the right It's not going to work. So rename your repo to uh, create the setting. And change the name to something to give up the IO. Your username. Just to be that 
Again, make sure to ask questions if you don't follow along. Uh, otherwise, you need to spend a more time after class. Uh, I was hoping that so the last assignment we can finish in class, so you don't have to spend a lot of time trying to re uh, review the uh, the video. So once you have the template up and running, then you can uh, go through the text file. So one thing you need to be careful is because this is HTML, if you accidentally delete something and then the text are not do not match, your HTML might be broken. So you just need to be careful. But the nice thing is that once you're in GitHub repo, you can always go back. So if something breaks, you can go back to see, you can re revert to a previous version if needed. Um, but it should be pretty straightforward. So, for example, here Twitter, right? Facebook, GitHub, whatever. So, if you really want, I can uh, come back to here. So, right now, you will see where's the icon. So, basically, let's say, for example, I want to customize this one to my own social media account. Uh, you can do that. So, I can normally do here. If right now, if I click, if it's my link, it doesn't work me yet. So, for me, I can go to here and so on the right here this is where you customize uh, where's the URL right it's just showing you uh, AOI so basically it's a list and then so for example I can add my github uh, URL to it so all you need is just change the hashtag to your URL so I'm going to come here I can come go to my github repo so this will be the URL to my GitHub repository. And then I just change this one. Uh, if you don't use this template, it might be different. But this is how you can change the URL. And then copy, paste, come back to here, refresh. And now if I scroll down here, if I click this icon, is it working? It should take you to my website. So this is how you can customize uh, HTML uh, again. Spend some time try to make a simple functioning. Most of the time, you just change the text, replace some images, and then it become your own. The nice thing is that you don't have to build this like scroll up, scroll down, those kind of stuff, right? It's all automatic. You can change the icon uh, if you want. So this should take you a minimal amount of time to create one. And this is what I'm asking for for lab one. Uh, we're only doing one section, so next. Uh, Oh, on Thursday, we're gonna go through how you can create another one using Markdown. So you'll be something like this. So we're gonna create another repo. You'll be uh, your name, and then you'll be like this. Right. So it's pretty much all about Markdown. So I'm gonna talk a little bit more about Markdown and how you can create this one. So this page is essentially what's going to show up on your GitHub repo when people visit your GitHub repo. So for now, uh, most of you, your repo should be empty, right? Do you see anything on your GitHub homepage? No much, right? So this is where the, the second one comes from. Right? If you have a repo name, exactly like the username, and then have a readme file in there, it's going to render on your homepage. So by default, so this is where you're going to showcase your, showcase your projects on GitHub, and this is what you can do. So you can have hyperlinks, you can have some pages, you can have projects, you can have images, you can even have some like simple statistics, how many languages you are using, you can also have this, but you can customize. So a lot of things you can showcase. So this is just to promote your stuff. And if you want to get into the tech industry, people are going to search you and then just to see what project you're working on. So if you have something to showcase, you are a lot more competitive than others that don't even have a profile. And so at the end of this semester, you want to have a, have a Python package or multiple packages going to show up in here. And you're going to have a content uh, you want. So I will show you. But again, everything is um, open source on GitHub. So you can see how I actually create this one. 
So if you want, you can follow the same thing. So this one is just using Markdown. And you can see, for example, how many commits I did last year. Oh no, in 20, I don't think I have like 2000, like right? in just in 2023, probably it's just like one year time span, how many P, uh, pull requests. Oh, by the way, so on, uh, on, on, on Thursday, we're gonna also talk about pull requests, how you can actually contribute to an open source project. So we're gonna talk about on Thursday, I'm gonna create a repo, and then I'm gonna ask each of you to contribute to my repository. So make sure that you practice how to clone a repo, how to make changes, how to push it back to GitHub. So those are the most basic ones uh, that you will need pretty much every week. And uh, you see I contribute to 75 uh, repository last year, and uh, in total get like 10,000 stars, basically. 10,000, not 10,000 people, but your repositories are bookmarked 10,000 times. So you can see like showcase to your future employer, like you have, you have some impactful stuff that other people are interested in, right? So this is one step for get you into um, the big tech industry or for PhD, whatever, uh, to, to you can write that in your application, just to show you that you have some CP. People are interested in. Uh, at least you have a website, right? A lot of people actually don't have one when you submit application, right? So now you know. And again, so this will be part one for the lab assignment. We we'll talk about uh, part two uh, on Thursday. So make sure you practice and uh, send questions to group list if you if you have any. And don't be shy, okay? Uh, you need to ask questions. Um, you you you're not supposed to know everything unless you already know you won't be here okay so uh, it's okay to ask questions and follow through i will try to slow down but uh, eventually we move faster so if you are um, behind make sure you spend some time so spend 30 minutes one hour after class uh, so this should not be very intensive uh, very time consuming but you just need to know all the steps and just practice a couple times then you become very quickly. And also on Thursday, we're gonna talk about how you create another website. So assume you have a main website, but you want to create another one just for a specific project, but you also want to host it on a website. Uh, I'm gonna show you how to do that as well. So after this week, you should have all the practical steps how to do stuff. And then uh, you become more natural when we have a Python package, how we push that one to GitHub, how we build the documentation, and then how we can add more functionality. Okay, any questions? If not, I will see you uh, on Thursday.